Never ever have I imagined in my wildest dreams that we would be stuck at home in quarantine and I'm sure neither have you. A lot has changed in the last 3 months and I'm sure you exactly know what I'm talking about. Today I'm starting a new series in which I am showcasing fellow creators and YouTubers in uh, showing you know what they have been up to um how they create the beautiful images that they do and what is their workflow behind it what is their ideology behind it all in good fun my first guest or should i say my first victim chosen for episode 1 was because of his love for food he has taken this passion and made it into something truly unique beautiful and wonderful he has shot for top brands across the country uh with that being said uh check out what we have been up to Hi guys my name is Regnil and welcome to my channel uh, today i have with me asad dadan who is a self taught food and product uh, photographer and as the video you just saw that is the magic that he does uh, thank yeah. you asad for uh, doing this with me and my being pleasure. the first victim on my <laughs> this uh, <I'm> series <laughs> <laughs> is this your quarantine look quarantine look hai. this has been the look always but uh, where it, it's grown a little bit longer i think in the past 3 months so yeah you can say this is the quarantine look from all the different uh, genres of photography mm-hmm. uh, why food photography oh this has a interesting back story i can say so i'm not a classically trained photographer uh, i was into visual effects and i quit my visual effects to start a tiffin delivery service back in 2000 12 and that's where i got into cooking and uh, shooting bit for my page and social media and all and people start telling me that the photos are looking great so after a year of still continuing to work in the animation industry i finally quit in 2015 and i started doing food and that's all i've been doing all of these years where did you learn to shoot food so beautifully that's a compliment <laughs> i think with food photography it's such that you need to also uh, um i don't know i can't speak about other aspect other types of photography but food photography i've understood that uh, you need to uh, actually address the history of the food uh, need to address a kind of a story related to the food uh, maybe the culture related to the food only then can you do justice to the food shot you know if it's uh, let's say if it's served in a cafe served in street side or if it's served in a very posh environment so i as a photographer need to understand or need to have a knowledge of ki ye kahan se aa raha hai you know right. uh, i can't just take a dish that's actually sold on the street and push it into a posh environment it won't work you know so i think i have a lot of knowledge uh, with regards to a lot of magazines that i used to read at that point uh, uh, like bbc good food and all always loved 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 and followed anthony bourdain's work parts unknown all of his shows his books uh whatever he had to write on his blogs and everything yeah so all of these things have contributed to for me to learn these kinds of food in that environment and uh, shoot it in the kind of environment that i'm shooting it in you know to make justice to the food how it looks that's a good point you make because you know uh to be honest uh we are indians and we love indian food but indian food isn't <laughs> the best looking food out there you know so you know okay just hold on just hear yeah. me out yeah. you know you you know a ba- a bowl of bengan bharta doesn't exactly look sexy so no. you know how do you present this in a way that looks you know edible you know it it looks tempting and you know it it makes you salivate bengan bharta i agree it's not uh, 
I mean, yeah, people love it. We as Indians, we love uh, all of our food. But I agree that it's not uh, sexy in that case. None of our food is sexy in that case. Like some may be, it may be appetizing. That's a different yeah. term. And uh, appealing or, you know, sensuous or sensual and appeal is not the kind of term that I would associate yeah, with Indian food. Two different I, things. I know like, a lot of people struggle with Indian food because most of us, our food is either in the form of curry. Yeah. Uh, where either the entire vegetable or the piece of meat is sitting somewhere it's inside. Submerged below completely. Yeah, yeah. and uske upar hai. So the all time the visualization is it's some kind of brown orange in this uh, same palette of gravies or we have some kind of red or green yeah. gravies and sometimes we have food sticking out. So I think the struggle with Indian food as such is that to highlight the elements inside uh, these kind of curry or dishes that we are doing, we always cheat it with having dough inside and then making sure that the piece of paneer or the piece of chicken or the piece of is, meat is yeah. kind of uh, floating on, above the gravy, on yeah. top, you know, because technically it would just sink down. You know? Pro tip guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're shooting Indian food, make sure that uh, you're not using a lot of curry instead fill it up with dough and maybe just have two ladles of that uh, curry and then make the paneer or the meat or anything sit on top so it doesn't sink that's the whole point of photography that you can highlight all of these things that belong to indian cuisine you know the two most uh, common uh, photographs that we see of food usually either it either it is a flat lay photo or it is like a pov a dinos perspective photo yeah. which one of these is your favorite and you know how do you decide whether you are going to take this shot in a top lay or you know in a dinos perspective or a pov shot so i think uh, in today's past few years i think flat lay or the top down shot has been everybody's favorite right, right. For, because if you open instagram and there are at least tens and thousands of images which are done in flat lay. A, because I understand flat lay is super, super simple to execute and anything done in flat lay looks good. Yeah. You know, uh, you can do a lot of combination with shapes and all. That's one thing. But personally for me, I think I would stick to the diner's perspective or the POV what we get. Like if I'm sitting over here and there's food kept over here, the angle that we look at it is 45 degrees. That's the angle that I like to shoot at so that I think that builds a more uh, connection with the audience when they are watching it because flat lay is something that is not native to us as human beings like we are not used to seeing food like this right yeah. so we are always food to eating it like this and serving it like this and seeing it like this so for me personally it's the POV angle that always hits the sweet spot like in terms of making you drool that's the shot. I wanted to speak about the photo that we shot that you will see on your screen now. Um, I remember when we were uh, making this setup ready, you were talking about having, you know, circles and straight lines. Yeah. So what was uh, your uh, thought process uh, behind or if you're making a set or you're deciding you're going to plate up in a particular way and have different elements around that set. So, you know, what, how, how, what is your thought process when you're doing something like this? Let me explain it to you. If you remember, that was a vertical frame. So this is my frame. So in my head, I'm clear that my hero item is going to be almost in the center of it so this is the element over here and there is another curved layer over here and on which sits the egg so if you see there are a lot of circles happening already this is a circle the plate itself is a circle and there's one more yolk sitting inside it which although is my hero dish but now i do not want to have too many circles over here and here so what i've done is i've added the tray of eggs over here which has these elements then i have cloves of garlic over here and i have few coriander sprigs over here and i have a knife over here which is half cut so if you see it balances out and this is kind of my negative space over here so the hero ingredient is element is in the center and it's complemented by these smaller elements which do not take away from this entire plate of food I think the best pro tip in this case is to have table napkins by yourself uh, because they can be folded into nice clean shapes also and like they become props. Also, yeah, yeah, if they need to be ironed, please, please make sure that they are ironed. If they are not ironed, you can just fella do just said to me, teak lagta hai short kind But if you're going to fold it and have it into the scene where you're going to have your uh, knife and your fork sitting on top of it, make sure it's ironed. 
once you're on a shoot uh, you know assuming you're there during the day so what uh, factors do you consider when you're deciding uh, you know whether that plate of food that you're going to shoot is you will use the natural light if it if you're there shoot, shooting during the day or you will use artificial light so honest confession <laughs> all of my client shoots are done with artificial lights my reason being that uh, it's a very you can do it in a controlled environment the air conditioning needs to be on because the food will not uh, be attacked by mosquitoes flies etc etc i think for food photography it's important that you shoot indoors and uh, because you're shooting indoors then i have to use artificial light also that most of these shoots last for around 5 to 6 hours to 8 hours and because of artificial light the consistency is always there i think most of the clients do not understand that why am i not shooting in sunlight because sunlight may when you start shooting the probably the light is on the uh, east of course when we are starting and by the time it reaches 12 o'clock suddenly you don't have direct light and then you are struggling with uh, less light so you are cranking up the iso and you're lowering your shutter speed you're making yourself uh, vulnerable to shakes and anything with lower shutter speed in that case right i know you you've shot in so many restaurants and and to be honest you know sometimes it looks as if you've been shooting in an empty restaurant <laughs> it's n- it's never empty <laughs> yeah yeah the shot we took over here mm. uh, you know was in a controlled environment and you know we had all the time in the world to yeah. you know sit and prep and do everything absolutely how is this versus to working in a live restaurant when you know there are people going to be coming in you know how difficult or how challenging or how easy is that definitely not easy <laughs> uh, it is challenging it may be i think it's it's uh, it's totally uh, it comes down to your character your personality how cool and calm you are in that situation i am absolutely uh chilled in these situations like pressure hoga internally to be I, it's not out on my face uh most of the time i like to work alone with my assistant i do not want to have too many people surrounded but yeah uh all of these shots like i told you most of these shots have been done in restaurants which are absolutely filled with people like you can imagine these shots and there are at least 10 people are standing behind me like ye kya hai ke you know it's it, the situation is like that rarely am i shooting in areas where it's absolutely empty or a dedicated area is given to me but uh, when we are shooting it's absolutely difficult uh, that we have one given area and we have to manage in, in that given space so this was in a live restaurant and i remember when we were speaking earlier also there have been instances where you've been shooting in a live kitchen that is actually going to be doing service to the guests now how does that work exactly because i'm sure if the chef is in the middle of his cook he is not going to listen to you so i think there there are two ways of doing it either uh, they tell you straight away that don't enter the kitchen because at this point we are not bothered about your shoot so they politely tell you that let's do this after the peak has done sometimes uh, the shot that i want to get in such situation is the chef in their elements i think that's the only time i would go into a kitchen where it's absolutely uh, you know at its peak serving food and i want to capture the whole chaos of the kitchen you know when i'm trying to do a much more controlled shot i would actually do it after 3 o'clock where the surface is slightly dialed down and then when i can tell him that you know you can wipe your sweat off you can probably change your chef coat yeah, and new chef fights yeah 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 like you can direct them easily because they don't have any tension of serving any dish you know at that point yeah but a good point here is you know guys always be nice to people if you ask nicely yeah. they will do anything for you if you speak nicely to them you know sometimes they will at least be less rude to you or they might at least you know give you some more space to work or some little yeah, extra yeah, time to yeah, work yeah, yeah. but you know being nice never hurts anybody i wanted to know what is your go to gear when you're on a shoot or you know what do you keep in your camera bag so my so mine is very minimal okay i think people will like some people think that is kid bag mein ye rahega wo rahega i have very simple logic i have a full frame camera uh, this is a 5d mark 4 uh, been there for like 3 and 1/2 years or something who absolute workhorse works in all kind of weather and everything uh i have my go to lens which is the 100 mm macro 100 macro yes uh, this is the l series one l series uh, like if you're doing food i think there's nothing better than this to start or at any point in your life i think this is the lens that you want for food photography a for compression uh, secondly for the clarity and the sharpness of the pictures that come out of it and it has stabilization also uh, so yeah the like most of the shots that you're seeing on my website or my instagram or my any other page that i'm uploading they've come from this so most of what you shoot is with is, the 100 macro yeah absolutely love the compression on this 
uh, any other lenses yeah i have the good old 50 nifty one, 50 nifty 50 uh, under 10000 uh, is a beast of a lens in any case i think nothing like i think every brand makes a 1.850 yeah. uh, so whatever brand you have please invest in a 1.8 because I think you don't get a 1.8 for this low of a price. And the third lens that I have is my 1635. Uh, not my primary lens to shoot uh, food photography, but yeah, to shoot architectures of restaurant or if I'm traveling any of architectural photography or landscape photography, this is the lens. Also to shoot my videos for YouTube and stuff, I use this one. This is a stabilized lens. Uh, this is F4, not the F2.8, the more expensive one. And of course, I have my laptop that I use tethered to shoot all the images wirelessly. On that note, uh, do uh, check out his channel. Uh, it's called Medium and Rare. Uh, you do a lot of travel uh, related uh, yeah. blogs on that. So definitely check that one out. Yeah. You've been shooting for more than five years right now. And I'm sure during this time, there would be certain images that have, you know, stuck with you or, you know, I don't say your favorites because I'm sure everything you shoot mm. is, is brilliant and amazing. But few images would have definitely, you know, uh, have a soft, uh, have a place in your heart. So, you know, could you just talk about that? But, but also the thing is that favorites keep on changing every year. Okay, like this Salka favorite is this and this Salka favorite is this. So, I, I think I don't have any personal favorite that has lasted for the six years or so. But I, I think I can show you that something that's uh, recent that way. This is one photo, this recently done one of a apple cider brand. Uh, I think it, it took me two days to do the entire shoot, but all of the shots were more or less similar with one bottle, two bottle, uh, bottle with apple, uh, just pouring shots. Uh, a lot of complications because I had to do this inside my bedroom and I mean like limited space. Uh, that's what the constraint is because of uh, quarantine. And uh, yeah, a lot of time gone into styling the bottle to make it look uh, cold and you know, uh, the urge to grab this bottle and drink it, like, drink it yeah. I want this right now you know uh, played around with eyes these are not fake eyes they're actual eyes so I took the actual shot minus the eyes and then I quickly added these eyes and made sure made sure that some of it was out of focus uh, some of it was in focus yeah the vapors are composited in photoshop but overall yeah uh, also the background has been changed it was shot on a solid background this is something that I cooked at home so uh, it's a banh mi sandwich, a Vietnamese banh mi sandwich. Uh, I wanted it to look very street-like because it's a grab-and-go uh, sandwich in from Vietnam. And I never seen banh mi like a posh sandwich. So I made sure that the lighting was like that, like a uh, hard lighting with hard shadows. Because I had these elements on side, uh, scattered on the side, the chicken cut abruptly. You can see splashes of the sauce and the crumpling of the paper, yeah. paper and all. As such, I didn't use any plate or any you know backdrop as such so there is a wooden backdrop just keeper mene crushed karke paper ko rakha that's it and if i had to talk about something experimental i think i would talk about this image which is nothing but uh, these charred leaves uh, these are from some organic farm that's why they have so many different colors i think ideally you wouldn't get it so i bought this from one of the supermarkets and these were all shot individually and then composited to make it look like they are floating in the air with these dust particles or water particles, what I would like to call. So they have been suspended or they have been stuck on skewers and toothpicks and all and I have taken it in different angles so I get options while I am actually composing the shot. And one of my favorite shots that I really like from your entire collection is the suspended burger one. You know? <laughs> levitation. The levitating, I think the everybody, levitating burger. Everybody loves it. Should we have a look at it? Yes, please. Uh, we'll see. have it on uh, screen now. Okay. <laughs> so this is, so unfortunately, unfortunately, this photo was never used by the client. Simply because uh, the onion rings that you see over here, they do not have onion, onion as such uh, in their burger. They have onion jam. So they said that this doesn't make sense for it. But like a, for a photo, I think everybody loves this photo. Simply because everybody wants to learn how to do these levitation photography. I think there are many tutorials. I don't need to talk about it. Yeah, but if you want to learn, surely come to my workshop. <laughs> Plug for that. Uh, yeah, I love it because it's how simple it is. Just one hand into the picture of somebody holding the plate and then these elements kind of falling or floating in the air. Uh, yeah, 
this is the one and only shot that I have done. Otherwise, I have never gotten time to do this complex of a setup because this takes roughly about two hours just to set up, and oh. then a lot of cleaning up and all of these post processing things that need to be done in Photoshop and Lightroom and all of that. That's easily another three hours, four hours job until you arrive at this result. We've spoken about so many uh, your experiences, how you shoot and lights and stuff like that. If I could ask you one tip or one advice that you would give to somebody who is, you know, trying to get into food photography, you know, what would it be? Hmm. One tip, just one. Just one. <laughs> I think for anybody who's starting, I think it's important that, uh, like, I, I'm I'm assuming this scenario that not everybody is born with deep pockets. So if you're starting off with any kind of photography, do not invest into buying expensive equipment. There are, uh, my tip would be to rent equipment. You know, I think it's easier on you that you can rent more expensive cameras, more expensive lenses, and do not have the burden of paying an EMI or such case. You know, only borrow or only rent it when you need it. Do great work, give great results, and uh, give it back. You know, you don't own it. Only buy it when you really need it that you have the amount in your hand. I think that's the one tip that I tell everyone that start renting if you want to do great work because directly you get access to great cameras and then people start noticing you because automatically you're get, getting great results. You know, like I started off renting, I rented for three years and then eventually I bought my uh, the camera body that I'm using. So that just about wraps up the first episode of Meet the Maker series. I hope you guys picked up a few pro tips from this one. Uh, do uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, please hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel for more videos. And I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye. Boom. Take care. Hi guys and uh, welcome to my channel. Okay. 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 Okay.